All right, hi guys. Today I actually wanted to create a video about a topic that I have been thinking much more about and it's actually very unintentional, but I've been thinking about it because I am on the receiving end of it. And basically the topic is about misogyny, which is basically prejudice against women, which are often negative. I pretty much wrote down some notes about what I have experienced throughout my lifetime. So I will say that most of my experiences obviously have been through gaming. In my personal life, I have had an instance when it comes to the workplace, but aside from that, I don't feel like I have experienced anything super notable, mainly because of my lifestyle. I keep to myself, I don't go anywhere public, I don't really socialize, so there are much less chances for me to come across that, whether it's like somebody making a remark, whether it's at a restaurant or a bar, just I don't honestly know where it could potentially happen, but I just know that the chances of it happening to me are much slimmer because I do not talk to people when I go out very rarely. I do greet people if they're friendly. I just don't put myself in those situations based on my lifestyle, I guess, and I'm often alone. So first off with gaming, this one has been very upsetting for me and I think the main reason for that is because it really saddens me that the treatment that I get online today is the same as it was, um, let's say, 14, 15 years ago. So, so that's basically saying how society's views on women have not very, changed very much because if they did, I'm sure that people would have different views and opinions on it, which would mean that they would not voice or say certain things like this whenever they come across a female online. So I'll admit for myself, um, lately I have been fairly ashamed that gaming is a big hobby of mine because I just don't feel like the people that I tend to come across online are good influences as well as just the treatment that you get regularly being female. So there's a lot of different factors for this. So first off, one of the main ones that you see in gaming and everything else in life for females is that their achievements are diminished by their gender. So back in Burning Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King, I PVP'd a lot and I obtained Gladiator. I got the title four times but just mainly during BC times, I'd say, um, there were definitely a lot of people who assumed that I bought my account or they assumed that somebody was playing on my account to get the rating or that I got carried. Those are always the three narratives that people assume when a female in the game has some sort of notable achievement. So you see that in everyday life because we see that in the tabloids when it comes to Taylor Swift. She has broken so many records. She's an extremely successful artist. She's an amazing songwriter. Yet every time they talk about her, they diminish her to the fact that she dates a lot of men. And that narrative is never applied to men when they date a lot of women. So that is something that I feel like I've come across all the time in gaming. Of course, other females always come across this and it's tiresome, it's, in, it's insulting. I, I had an instance recently where I was just trying to PvP for fun with a friend and I put in the description that I had previous Gladiator experience, that I had like 2700 experience and we were just trying to find a mage to play some threes with and mess around and the person that we found wrote in chat, is this some chick that you're carrying or what's going on here? That's what he wrote. So basically what he assumed is that me being the person with the PVP experience, he assumed I was a man and that my friend who has no PVP experience, well, like nothing notable that he can mention through achievements or titles or any of that, they assumed that I was the man and that my friend was the woman because I was playing with him and they just assumed I was naturally like boosting him or something. Also assuming that 
females are only capable of being carried and not being the one with the titles. It's very, very pathetic and sad that stuff like this still happens to this day because you know what, as I take the time to think about it, I feel like a lot of what I'm experiencing now are things that the women in my period films experienced so many years ago. Everything just feels the same. It's just presented in a different manner, maybe a little bit more subtle, but there's just so many people I think that don't recognize that these are unacceptable, insulting, disrespectful, all these negative things, but maybe at the same time they don't care and perhaps deep down they disrespect all of the women in their life. Another one that is extremely common, obviously, is harassment and harsh language. So harassment can come in any form. If I come across a new player, then once they find out I'm female, they might start sending me inappropriate messages. So this happened just a couple months ago at the very start of this expansion. I was playing with this one player and we were doing a couple Mythic Plus with others. And eventually he started messaging me, asking me what my sexual orientation is. Eventually he sent me some messages that were really, really disrespectful and inappropriate. So I just immediately removed him from my friends list. But people need to keep in mind, stuff like this happens all the time, all the time. It might not happen every single day, but the fact that it's consistent and something to expect whenever it happens again, it's not kind of just like, oh, let me laugh it off. It's just really deep disappointment, honestly. So another example that I gave in my video that I made years ago, I made a video that was called um, My Experiences as a Female in Online Gaming. And I mentioned how when I joined a guild, a lot of guild members started harassing me. And then the... And then one of the guild members who was streaming their progression raid at the time, him and a couple other guild members in Twitch chat started talking about how I deserve to be gang raped. They called me a cunt. They just wrote all these really, really awful, horrible things about me. And they literally knew nothing about me outside of the fact that I told one of the officers that I'm probably going to just not really respond to some of them because they were sending me, they were bombarding me with messages the moment I joined the guild. And that is not something that you ever experience unless there are ulterior motives. So that experience was the first time I had ever experienced extremely, extremely, extremely misogynistic behavior online. And I was really blown away because this was maybe just three years ago, just three years ago. So um, another big problem that I remembered thinking at the time during that experience is the fact that there may be decent human beings in this guild that stay quiet about these other guild members' behavior just because of their worth in the guild. So in environments like that, there may be some really, really toxic, disgusting individuals with some very, very messed up views, but they are allowed to stay around and the only reason they can is because they are good at a video game. So what these people in the guild are essentially telling you is that um, as long as you're good at the game, you can disrespect other guild members because there was other females in the guild. You can say some really awful sexist things and other people will just have to deal with it because you're good at playing WoW. I, I think people just need to take the time to think about environments more mindset, the person behind the player. You need to, um, you really need to take the time to think about those things. And I think that a lot of people simply just don't, which makes them, in my opinion, kind of just as bad because they are condoning a behavior by remaining silent. It's the same as like, I was just watching a movie recently where um, this woman was being harassed on the subway by these two men and there were a bunch of people sitting nearby and they did nothing. They said nothing, they did nothing. This is the same thing. If you say and do nothing when you see something bad happening, you're just as bad. Another thing that is very common that people tend to impose on women, uh, this applies to gaming and everything else, is the fact that we are expected to be cool about some of these things. 
So the example that I mentioned earlier about that guild that was really, really misogynistic, they had a female guild member already. And something that they proudly advertised to me was the fact that she was able to handle sexist jokes and be cool with it and that she had thick skin. That was something they actually proudly said to me. And when they told me about some of the jokes that were directed at her, I immediately lost respect for this woman because if she does not think highly of herself to allow abuse like that to keep happening, then I really do not care about that individual whatsoever because some of the stuff that they said was just disgusting, really. And um, the fact that they believe that women should take abuse to fit in and appear cool is totally unacceptable. That goes along with a narrative where if women raise objections, then people just feel like she's being emotional. She's making a big deal out of nothing. All of these other traditional excuses that have been mentioned from time to time, there is still that issue where a lot of people think that the excuse of it's just a joke is actually valid. That is not a valid excuse. So this is something that I have noticed more lately and thought about, but back then I don't really think that I thought about it very much. But there have been certain phrases that gamers use when it comes to their significant others, their wives, their girlfriends, whatever. And back then they used to say girlfriend aggro or wife aggro. And in my opinion, that is already painting your significant other in a negative light because that tends to mean that your wife or your significant other is perhaps unhappy that you're playing the game and that your attention needs to be on them. And then as a result, you're unable to continue playing. So usually when people would type that, they would type that in a party or maybe during the raid, I don't know. In my opinion, that's something that's really unnecessary to state because they are throwing their significant other under the bus as an excuse when all they can simply say is give me a moment or like give me one second. You know what I mean? Like instead of just asking for a moment to address whatever's going on in their life, they have to say this one phrase that makes it seem as if their girlfriend or their wife is being unreasonable. And I am astonished that people still use that phrase today. And another thing I've noticed plenty of times is that there would be people that are married in Discord and they would mention something like, hold on, I need to talk to my wife. And then somebody else in the Discord would say something disrespectful like, oh, see you in two hours, basically insinuating that women talk too much. And then the married man would be like laugh about it, laugh about it. Someone just disrespected your life partner and you don't care. You laugh about it or you don't think it matters enough for you to actually say something about it. So maybe, yeah, there can be the situation where it's not worth it to like pick a fight over something like that. But the whole remaining silent over something, that just bothers me a lot because silence is weakness. And um, silence also means that these actions will keep on happening if you don't speak up about it. And I just, sometimes I just feel very bad because if I was dating someone or married to somebody that would say something like that about me, I probably would not want to be with them because that clearly shows that they don't respect you enough to care about how others are like speaking about you. Like th that's the thing though. If you know that somebody is married to somebody and you say that about their significant other, you must know that they care deeply about this person, but you're still going out of your way to say something sexist and somewhat insulting. And it's um, even worse to think that the married man just doesn't even want to defend his wife. All right, I am going to move on to a situation that happened to me just over a year ago. And I have mentioned it a little bit on Instagram. I don't think I've ever really extensively talked about it. Maybe I have, but we'll go over it again. So when it comes to the workplace, I don't feel like I have ever 
truly experienced misogyny. However, the situation I'm about to mention, I believe has fragments of it in there. And honestly, for me, I am still trying to piece it together myself, pick aspects of it that might have something to do with our gender differences. So when I first joined my current job, I was basically hired as a software engineer and I needed to work closely with my lead, who is a man that is probably like early 30 years old or so. So our dynamic, I don't remember what the beginning exactly was like, but um, you guys know what I'm like. I'm very, very open. I talk about whatever and um, I'm not shy about it. I offer up personal information about myself without worry. And I guess when it comes to other people, if they're not used to that, let alone a female doing that, they might think you're insinuating something. I don't know. But what I remember is just that me and my coworker did get along very well. We talked a lot. He often came to my cubicle and we would talk for like three hours straight. This could happen on a daily basis. So the amount of time we spend talking obviously varied. We wouldn't spend three hours every day talking, but I will say we did spend a lot of time talking during the work day where I was not getting work done. I was just talking to him because he came to my cubicle. Throughout my time knowing him during like the first year and a half, I would say that once in a while he would be kind of mean to me where if I asked him a question about work, he might give me a little bit of attitude about something or he might just make it difficult for me. We would have conversations that felt like it was a little bit stressful when it really didn't need to be. I just either needed some guidance or clarification on something and I felt like it was unnecessarily complicated at times. There was also this one moment maybe six months into working there where I was starting to feel very anxious when I was in the office. And the reason for that is because I was anxious that he would show up behind me any moment. And it felt difficult for me to focus on doing my work, knowing he would just appear behind me any second. And I really didn't like that because if you're just working on something and then somebody shows up suddenly behind you, I am somebody who startles easily, so I did not like trying to anticipate that. It was really hard for me to just let go and work, and if he shows up, then I'm like, oh, hi, it's not like that. I was kind of thinking about it often, and it really stressed me out. So one time, I sent him a message telling him something along the lines of like what I basically just told you in as nice of a way as possible that I could think of, and he did not react very well to it. And then for the next week or two, he started giving me the cold shoulder. If I went up to him to ask him a work-related question, he would look very cold and um, just not elaborate a lot, just like obviously appear unhappy to talk to me. And eventually I must have said something to him. Maybe I, maybe I apologized to him and said like, that wasn't my intent, this and that. And then we started being on good terms again. But at the end of 2019, around September, October, that time, uh, I started getting very fed up with this type of treatment because outside of the workplace, there would be occasional times where I would have to interact with him. So I made the poor choice of agreeing to be on the same phone line with him because one time he came to me and he said that there was a buy one get one free deal for the new Samsung phone and he wanted to upgrade and he wanted me to do it with him and I was just like sure why not so we got on the same phone line and anytime there was an issue with the bill or anytime there was any sort of complication regarding the phone line he wanted me to call customer service and deal with it and he even wanted me to do it when I was on vacation once when I was in Montana there was a little bit of time where I had to fucking call Verizon and deal with something because he just didn't want to do it for some reason. So anyways, that along with some of the workplace um, stress or like just being mean uh, that he would constantly do, 
I started getting very, very tired of it. And then eventually I just started like really phasing out my interactions with him. And um, at one point he started trying to kind of like reel me back in. You know what I mean? So there were also other things that I was also a bit uncomfortable about that he started doing. And this is something that I think may be part of the overall topic of this video because I just don't believe that he would do this to a man. So eventually, whenever he came to my cubicle, he started sitting on my desk. And I feel like sometimes the act of sitting on someone's desk feels very close, you know? Like I wouldn't just go up to a stranger if I needed to talk to them and sit on their desk. So that just felt like an action that I was a bit startled about and not sure how I felt about it. But eventually, he started sitting on my armchair rest right here. He would sit right here a couple times with me. And I was extremely uncomfortable with that. So at one point when he wanted to talk to me and kind of like ask me, you know, what issues do you have with me? Why are we not talking as much? And I told him about seat sitting and he told me that he does that to his close friends. He started seeing me as less of a coworker and more of a friend and that's how he treats his friends. And I don't truly believe that he would do that with his male friends. I just don't see it. So that was something that I brought up, but I did also mention to him about the whole, you know, treating me poorly um, out of nowhere. And uh, I just didn't really want to deal with it anymore, right? It's at, at some point in time, you stop accepting poor treatment towards yourself. And you also start realizing that, you know, life would be much better without this constant source of stress. So unfortunately, that didn't really go over very well because um, eventually work started just feeling very bad. Like I didn't enjoy going into work anymore because we sat right by each other. So his presence was always there. Even if we're not directly interacting with each other, I feel like his presence was always there. He tried to force conversations with me and he would uh, sometimes ask me if he could bring me food during lunch, just like trying to do all these favors for me, even though I just wanted nothing to do with him. So after some period of time like that, where he was constantly trying to interact with me and I was constantly denying and rejecting it, um, I finally felt like I couldn't handle it anymore. And I went to my manager and I told him what happened. So I think my train of thought there was that I wanted to go to my manager first and see if anything would be done. If nothing happened that satisfied me, I would then go to HR. And basically what happened is my manager separated us, which was good. But at the same time, I do feel like that whole situation had somewhat of a neg negative impact on my work at this company because the work that I was doing previously, I felt like suited my interests more as well as my professional development. I feel like I was working with technology that I preferred, coding in PHP, JavaScript, working on creating some web applications for people. But now, for a while now, ever since that time, November 2019, I have pretty much switched my focus because they needed to find me other work that did not involve my coworker. Basically what he wanted to do, right, was for me to never collaborate with him again professionally. And that meant that had, they had to find other stuff for me to do. My first project wasn't very bad. I basically created a tool for the test engineers from the ground up and I did that in PHP. So I did enjoy that. I enjoyed creating it from scratch, making all the decisions myself and also interfacing with my customer. But lately I've just been working with a lot of Microsoft applications and I have never been interested in that. I find that very boring. I find that technology very old and it's not very thrilling. So that whole situation um, kind of did open my eyes a bit about the power dynamic. So yeah, that situation definitely opened my eyes a bit more when it comes to power dynamics because instead of just approaching the situation as he makes me uncomfortable, um, let me try to put a stop to this or change it, 
I had to consider the fact that he was a big collaborator when it came to work. I always went to him for new tasks and I would go to him for help with things. Like he was basically someone that I was talking to and needed to talk to on a daily basis. So trying to navigate and figure out how things would change if I were to report things to my manager was always like weighing heavily on my mind. And I think in the beginning also, I was reluctant to even report his behavior. So that was something that my manager actually told me when I mentioned to him that I was getting, you know, the cold shoulder when I confronted him the first time about showing up at my desk too much. Um, my manager did say, you should have told me about that because yeah, he probably could have maybe spoken to him or um, done something to help make me feel more comfortable. But I do think that oftentimes um, we just don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to complicate things. We don't want to ruin what is, we just don't want to ruin the way things are. And sometimes we perhaps doubt that a situation is worthy of being brought up and having things change if you feel even the slightest bit of discomfort. I've never really had a situation like that happen before in the workplace. So that was fairly disappointing and um, definitely opened my eyes up more when it comes to this whole situation. And I guess lastly, something that I do want to talk about, which is pretty obvious, is just the type of treatment that you get for something as simple as streaming. I feel like um, before I started monitoring things a bit more tightly in terms of restricting people from chatting for a full day and just requiring you to follow, people would easily come in and make remarks that have nothing to do with the gameplay. They would focus on the fact that I'm female, so they would maybe mention how the person that I'm playing with is single. They're basically putting my worth in a romantic aspect, which is basically what people used to do way back when, right? The only value a woman had was um, whether she was someone you would marry, and then afterwards she had a specific role, being a mother, taking care of the household, whatever. And these people are pretty much doing the same thing where the fact that you're female only serves one purpose, whether you are dateable or not. And like, they, they kind of see you as just, you know, a piece of meat, not as someone with layers of like, whether it's intelligence, it has nothing to do with your personality, um, what you've accomplished for yourself, just like all these different layers to a person they don't see any of that. All they see is, oh, is she single? Who is she dating? Or like, oh, the person you're playing with is someone you can date because they're single. Just stupid remarks like that, which is pretty much why um, when it comes to my channel, I have always monitored it very, very strongly. Like I dislike a lot of the streaming culture. So um, I don't really allow people to come in and you know comment on my appearance. Um, mentioning my gender for any non-useful reason. <laughs> I can't really think of an example of that right now, but it's just completely irrelevant in my opinion. Same as the way people treat you in games. Your gender has absolutely nothing to do with what you are doing at that moment, which is playing a game. So the fact that they have to go out of their way to point it out or make it known or make it um, as one of their sole reasons of perhaps behaving negatively towards you or saying something negative towards you. It's just, it really, really drains you. I definitely started noticing maybe at the end of, I think it would be, yeah, at the end of 2019, after I had been streaming quite consistently for like six to seven months, I started getting very tired of that type of treatment. And I honestly still am, but that would be foolish to say that I'm somehow getting used to it and starting to feel okay with it. Absolutely not. 
I actually do feel like I will have that high standard for people that I regularly speak to and that hopefully in the future, if I'm dating somebody, if I get married, that they will be an individual that actually can see and understand why any of this behavior is unacceptable. I need them to understand at a very deep level because I feel like a lot of the people that I talk to about this, they sound like a parrot. I feel like they're just regurgitating what I'm saying back to me because if they fully like really dig deep, they can provide some own personal spin and insight. But I just tend to hear a lot of typical stuff like, oh, um, anyone I come across, I treat like anybody else or just like they say very surface level things about this topic. And um, I just, it, it can feel a little insulting sometimes, I guess. And maybe that's kind of harsh to say because sometimes people are incapable of thinking at that level. But uh, for stuff like this, I think it's very important to take the time to really think and dive deep because there may be a situation in life where stuff like this can apply to you. And you would hope that other people will feel empathy and support you when you're being disrespected for something you have no control over as well as something that has absolutely nothing to do with the situation. So at least in my personal life, I have managed to avoid a fair amount of this treatment, but um, I will definitely say that when it comes to gaming, I'm really, really turned off from continuing to play multiplayer games because of the fact that I'm putting myself at risk of coming across some really, really ugly human beings. And um, I just kind of hope that the more that I talk about it and the more I bring up these instances that happen, people will hopefully take the time to think about why is this a problem? Why does it keep happening? What can I do to help minimize the problem? What can I do to contribute to being a better influence over this problem? Maybe that was a really bad way to phrase it, but just like less silence and more speaking out when you see something like this happening because it really does happen very, very often. And I just feel like um, I have not come across many people men particularly, who really go out of their way to um, support you on this. I tend to feel like a lot of the ones that I have personally come across, they ignore it or they um, don't think it's a big deal. And those are both very insulting. I do feel some relief getting some of these thoughts out, but whenever I do these long talk through videos, I'm just, my mind is very scrambled and I just try to make sure that I'm not leaving anything very important out. Hopefully it gave you something to talk about and hopefully it can give you some sort of idea as to what regular experiences I have, um, even in 2021, where I would have hoped by now none of this stuff would still be happening, but it still does. So think about that connection next time if you feel the need to say something about a woman that you're prejudiced against simply because of her gender. Think about how that act could trickle down into what your actual beliefs and mindset is like. Because if you're treating someone negatively just because she's a woman, you should probably think about how you would feel if someone did that shit to your daughter your mom, your sister, someone you really care about that's also a woman because that stuff is actually all interconnected, believe it or not. Sometimes I find it hard to believe that people like this behave the way they do and then probably they have a lot of women in their life that they claim to care about and respect but if they behave like this on the side, I just like think about it. <laughs> connects. All of it fucking connects. Anyways, thank you for listening to me talk and I hope it made you think a little more.